everyone. Uh, welcome back to our uh, ultimatesportschannel.com webcast. Uh, we're going to mention that because uh, we have the website set up now. We've got an ongoing sports feed every day. Also our sponsors and uh, all the audio and video podcasts that we're on. So if you go to the website now, you can see everything that's happening. You can see where to, to download us the audio or the video. You can see our sponsors. Appreciate that. Sponsors are what keeps the shows going. And, um, and we appreciate you as the fans. Our numbers are growing. Uh, significantly matter of fact we had our first 10,000 uh, viewer day on Vimeo the other day which was fantastic for one day uh, along with all the all the other medias but Vimeo is leading for us right now anyway what we're here to do is talk NFL one of our favorites well, probably our favorite sport and uh, what we're talking about is if you've been uh, watching the shows is the camps we're going one by one through every team in the NFL we're getting close now man it's like a month and a bit away uh, so very exciting getting ready for the NFL season they're all in camp now um, and I want to uh, tell a little bit of a story from the beginning of camp. You know, Tom Brady's there first day of every camp. It was amazing. He's there with all the young guys, everything. He just shows what a leader he is. And then I listen to guys who aren't showing up. I listen to guys that are contract disputes. I listen to guys that are just freaking whiners. And you know how you win six Super Bowls? You show up on day one of camp and you're there for your guys. And, you know, it's so impressive. And then Belichick is such an impressive coach. He got asked the first day of camp. Uh, you know, how does Tom look out there? He says, I don't know. I have 90 guys to worry about. I don't look at Tom. <laughs> so, well, I and mean, that was classic I Belichick. Mean, you classic. can always find out why the greats mm -hmm. are the greats. You know, you can always know that Kobe was first in the gym. There's actually a funny story about Kobe Brown once on some kid uh, on, in the NBA. I don't know who it was, but wanted to be. He goes, I'm playing Kobe tonight. I want to be. I'm going to show up extra two hours to work. And, and be ready for Kobe. He shows up. Kobe was already there for two hours, and you hear balls bouncing around the gym. Yeah, yeah. So you know these guys. There's no mystery. You know Tom Brady has showed up for every camp all the time. And he, he's missed a couple of days or whatever, and he's on vacation now. But he man, he shows up, puts in the work. He goes to travel with Gronk to throw him some balls. He invites yeah. people over to his house. Now we all think it's funny games, and it is. But it, it's work for these guys, and and they get it done. And, and you know credit to him for using what life has given him, which is money, so he can invite retired receivers over to run routes with him and throw the ball at his house instead of having to go to the, the, the facility. You know, you can bring guys on vacation. But these guys could all do that. Putting in the work. It's about putting it. in the work. It's it not about money and, and all that. They and have that. Out, yeah. And here we are. We're going to look at Dallas. And this is the reason we talked about leadership and work ethic and all that. We're looking at the Dallas camp. We're looking at the Dallas team. Uh, we had There was a conversation on TV about Garrett again as the coach. All these kinds of things. But, you know, are they going to pull it together? They're dealing with a young quarterback. They're dealing with a young running back. But, man, there always seems to be issues in that First camp. of all, I don't think Dak Prescott is worth $30, $35 million, which you're talking about paying per year. Um, I, I, I don't really have much of a strong opinion on Jason Garrett. I feel like he does what he has to do. I don't feel like he, he's a great coach. I don't think he's a bad coach. I feel like he just is what he is. Quite frankly, he allows the talent on the field to try to win games and and he plays safe, and I'm sure he's just taking. I feel like he's an orders guy. Like he just, you know, does what he's told. I, I, I don't hate him or just like I don't think he's the reason why they're losing, but I don't think he's gonna push him over the top either. Right. So it depends on what you want. Do you believe in your talent enough to get you there, or do you believe you need a coach who can push you to that next level? A lot of people believe coaches are so important that you need that. I tell you what, I mean, I don't know. Like obviously Belichick's one of them, but if you look at a lot of teams, a lot of teams can win on talent, can get there on talent. So Jason Garrett, for me, stop, just leave him alone. I don't yeah. think he's a conversation at all. What's a conversation is paying Dak Prescott 30 to $35 million for arguably average season. I mean, statistically, they look good. He's been in the playoffs twice. That looks good. Want to play? So if that's what you're going for, sure. Is he a Super Bowl quarterback at 30 35 million? No. And if he's smart, you can't take that money, kid. You need help. And they got an offensive line that they've paid. They got defense. They got everything. This is a Super Bowl team. In any other city, with any other owner, with any other coach, people would believe it's a Super Bowl team. It's simply because it's Dallas. They don't believe in it. At training camp, everyone's back. Everyone's like, Elliot. But then you got uh, him, and now Elliot's upset with his right. contract. And this is another guy. Well, let's go, let's go back to Prescott for a minute. Okay. Um, they're signing these guys now for the future because they're going to get offered bucket loads of money. Any quarterback who can stay in the game, be on, out in the field, so many of them are getting hurt these days, the quarterback position is ridiculous. He, what people forget in my mind anyway, he was not a number one uh, round draft pick. Well, a lot of guys right? are not, though. He came in, he's put his team in the playoffs two years in a row, and part of that without uh, without uh, the, his running back, Elliott. 
Um, he's been good, but he's, he's three years in the league. I mean, he's going to continue to get better every year. I think he's got the talent there. I think he needs to work on the, on the leadership part of it. And that takes time and that takes experience. But you know what? They have to sign these guys early. No. The money is getting ridiculous. The teams are taking any quarterback who shows the ability. The minute he gets to be a free agent, he'll be gone if you don't treat him right. And these guys are getting way more sensitive these days about getting treated right. And Dallas, I think, is making the right move. They're picking their guy, right or wrong. They're picking their guy that can take them uh, in the long, uh, the long term to the, to the Super Bowl. I believe he can get them there. Um, I think he needs experience. He needs time, leadership, all those kinds of things. But I think they have to do I'll that. I'll tell you what. So that's just the way I think teams have to operate these days. I think Brett Favre can get these guys in the playoffs. Like, this is a, such a defensive team now. What people are underestimating because quarterbacks and running backs take the shine. I get it. This is such a good defense, guys. And I don't think anyone's really putting enough emphasis on this. You don't need a $30, $35 million to win with this team anymore. In the past, you did because Dallas never really built a great defense. And arguably, they need a star quarterback to take a lot of the light because that's what stars are. They're quarterbacks. They're running backs. They're shiny. But this defensive team is so good. And this offensive line is so good. You can literally put anyone behind there as far as I'm concerned. You can bring Romo back, and I think they can make the playoffs. Their division is crap, by the way. Washington's no good. The Giants are no good. All they got to do is deal with Philadelphia, who, in my mind, got rid of Foles and now has Wentz, which, great quarterback. You want to talk about talent. That's talent. But injury prone. Every year. You could get into the playoffs in this division with such a sorry record. Why are you going to go pay Dak Prescott 30, 35 million? First of all, pay Elliott. He's way more important and get literally anybody to play behind that line with this defense to be quarterback. I am sorry. Yeah, but you know, you know he is I, not that good. I can't good. agree with that. He I mean, is Blake Bortles let me tell get you, this team well, in the playoffs. Let's talk about the fact that both behind the number one superstar quarterbacks, every team's crap. This guy has got the ability and the and the um uh, that if he gets the time to be a great quarterback. You're talking about a young guy, three years in the league, really had nobody. Romo was gone. He had nobody to mentor her, him into this position. I think he's going to get smarter. I think he's going to play better. I think he's going to get there. He's going to have, as Joyce is a good defense, a good offense. Lots of great quarterbacks, by the way, have had those things that made them it's successful. It's about 30 to 35 million. It's got nothing to do with it. Jerry Jones lot. has more money it, than God it's all about the could cap, have. Dad. It doesn't it's matter. The They'll work around the cap. He's going to be there. But here's what Dallas needs. Dallas needs superstars. You're out of your mind, because Dallas used to be my team before we lived in Seattle. You're out of your mind if you think you can put anybody back behind you put Roma that back line. There. You put Roma well, Roma's back not there. coming back. So you're you put talking it, my point is you put anybody back you, there. Uh, but you can't. Yes, you need you a star. You need a guy who stands out. That's in Elliot. Dallas, Elliot. In Dallas, the quarterbacks have been everything in Dallas over their whole history. That's who they make their team off of. That's who's famous in their team. And Tony Romo never got – everybody talks about Tony Romo. He didn't get past the first round of the playoffs. In his whole career. So let's not talk about it doesn't take anybody and anybody to go back there. It's just not a fact. The fact is in Dallas, you need marquee players. He's one of them. Elliot's another one. They're going to pay both. have to pay both of them. Their accountants are going to have to go to the books to figure it out, as most teams do. Seattle, our team just paid our quarterback $35 million a year. Stupid. And they don't need him. They're a real team that doesn't need him because they just run the ball all the time. So, so it's Dallas. They don't. They need this they kind of Elliot. But they need a marquee oh, quarterback. This is marquee what makes the Dak Dallas Prescott. Cowboys go. Oh my God. They barely made the playoffs. It's so so if you can only pay, you can only pay Prescott or Elliott, who are you paying? You're paying both. Then they're going to end up you doing can. that. That's the Every problem. The cap's that. tight. I know, but they paid their offense. They're a highest paid offensive line. They're a high paid defense. You built the, a team. You can't. You got to talk to Prescott. Prescott could go for fifteen million. And then win Super Bowls with fifteen million on his he's, cap. But you know what? That's my sacrifice. He's a young guy. He's Brady take had money. to sacrifice it. Andrew Luck just had to sacrifice it because he knew he couldn't go okay. anywhere okay. without a line in a Let's defense. get you back in reality. So I, both I'm experienced in quarterbacks who are near the end of their careers are taking Who's less money about? to try and win. Luck. Andrew and Luck's Brady, twenty-seven years old. Well, he's been around forever. He's finally had to figure it out. Dak Prescott's not twenty-seven years he's old. Twenty-five. So he's got a couple of years where he's going to want his money. It's about recognition. It's about getting the money. The young guys are going to take it. No matter what you say around all these young guys are going to take the money. We just had it. Russell Wilson just completely collapsed Seattle with his contract. Him. I would have traded They him. all do this, and he needs to get it right now. They have nobody behind him. They have no one to play quarterback. He needs to be the guy. He needs to be brought up in his esteem and his confidence. That happens in Dallas. It's a very tough city to play football in, and he's the marquee guy if he can make that happen. So let's move on because we're not going to agree on this. So Elliot's the next story. 
This guy's a troublemaker. This guy's suspendable. This guy is a real problem. And I think they could, they could sign him and move him anytime. He's going to be an ongoing problem like he's been since he arrived on the team. Tell me any different. You need to have him. He's on been your team. suspended. He's been trouble. He's, he's been he, hurt. He's actually, he, Everything yeah. that makes you know he's not going to last. He's never been hurt, but he's been suspended. Uh, and yes, he might have some trouble off field, but he, you got to keep him. He's, you want to talk about Marquis. He's more Marquis than Dak. He's loved in Dallas, but more importantly, you got to have him. He's your heart and soul of this team. They proved it when he went out. They could not win when he went out. They couldn't, uh, uh, they, I'm pretty sure they went two and six without him in the lineup. So you want to talk about importance. That's importance because he creates everything. He creates the passing game, creates the running game. He, he kills the clock. With a great defense now, defensive running games, it usually goes together, right? Because the running game could take so much time with the clock, the defense looks extra good, and the defense is talented enough to hold off whatever time the other team has the ball. So in my mind, you have to have now, please someone get to his head and tell him to stop getting in fights with people. We don't need to know how tough you are. Now, first of all, this thing that happened in Vegas, it's not going to happen. It's not going to go anything further. It wasn't even a huge deal. What's a huge deal about it is that he obviously has some priors, of to fighting people so he's got to calm down but he's very important i i would he wants to get paid he will not play unless he gets paid i'd pay him first um dak you can wait on because he's still under contract i think he'll play this season uh without a new contract so you got to sign elliot first see how this goes the thing in football is look at cream hunt who's actually been suspended and might be suspended again actually has um you know real issues and still gets paid this guy's tradable if he gets suspended again, I believe, to another team. So I feel like there's always value for guys of this talent. I think you have to have him. It proved it when he was out. They couldn't win. So as far as I'm concerned, though, Dallas, you've created a great offensive line. You create a great defense. Okay, i got to stop you, you here. Receivers, you, you go from you one it. thing to another team by team. We've gone on three or four other shows where you said the running back is all about the offensive line. You said that. You said that about Le'Veon Bell. But I have proof. You said that it's not worth. I have proof for both. No, but you I said have proof it's for not, both. You just said they got a better offensive line. I can't believe this. So they can put anybody back there. No, You've been repetitive over and over and no. over again that they can put any running back behind a good offensive line and that'll be good enough to make that team work. Now all of a sudden you're saying this guy's a god and he's got to be paid. Because because you I said Dallas has that marquee stars. Well, if they have that no, marquee I said stars, no quarterback. You're not listening. Dak Prescott again. is way less important than Elliot so, Dallas. I guarantee you. That's not what I said though. You're I, you're going back. You said marquee stars. I said no, I did not. I said quarterback, marquee no, that's quarterback. What I said. I'll, I'll, well, we'll go back on the tape. I can guarantee you that's what I said. Anyway, this guy's a problem. He's a dressing room problem. He's a substantial problem. He's going to be a problem for this team. He needs to be moved. They don't need to pay this money to a running back. They're putting their money in the offensive line. Seattle's proved that they went three different running backs who are all successful. They went into Pittsburgh with Le'Veon Bell, who everybody said is the greatest running back to ever touch the field, and Connor got as many the same stats as Bell did. So you know what? It's about the offensive line. Make a hole. Any running back can go through it, and I think we got the same thing in Dallas. That's my point. You have a different point, so let's move on. What other factors do we have here? Well, most of all, we got to talk about where we think they're going to finish. Well, I think they're going to win the division. I think it's no question they'll win the division. Defense oh, with this horrible quarter. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, because it's not about him. In fact, on, on in playing in Dallas is difficult for other teams. They obviously get the dome, but they are a good physical team. Ultimately, I'm actually more hyped on this defense than anything else. That's why I'm upset about these offensive stars getting the star that powers they get. But it is the way of the NFL. But that's why I'm trying to prove my point. It's about defense, about the offensive line. It's about the fact that he played sorry offense and still got the second round last year. I think it'll be the exact same. They'll win this division. This division is very weak, guys. Washington the Giants are an absolute joke in this in this division. It's pathetic. And arguably, Philadelphia comes down to can Carson Wentz stay healthy, which I don't think he can. He's had really bad injuries. Even if he's healthy, I think you're only ever going to get 85% of Carson Wentz or well, 80% of Carson Wentz. injuries are tough injuries. So when you look at that, they should win this division. And that's why I'm upset where this money is going because I would just talk to Prescott. You tell me you can't survive on $15 million. And that's what bugs me the most probably because I'd take that It's not second. about money. It's, but, about, it's about prestige. Anyways, let's, be right, let's move on. They'll win the division. They'll play a wild card game. They'll have a home wild card game. I don't know if they'll win the wild card game. They'll be close. And they'll probably play the Rams or the Seahawks, because I think whoever finishes second in that division will be the top wildcard team. I feel like Dallas will be either set, uh, third or fourth divisional uh, record-wise winners. Um, they'll have a wild, I think they might get past first round, to be honest with you. Um, and, and, you know, they got a great division. They timed it pretty, pretty well. You know, honestly, they timed it well. They've gotten good when the rest of the division arguably has gotten worse. Uh, besides Philly, and I know the hype on Philly, but Nick Foles is gone. So, Without Carson Wentz, this division is totally easy for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. They're going to be some tough divisional games. 
I'll give them an 11 and 5 record. Uh, that's good enough to get it done for me, and that gives them a wild card game. I think they'll be third or fourth divisional seed, uh, uh, and, and go from there. But yeah, they they really uh, timed this perfectly uh, with all these teams on the downward spiral, as far as I'm concerned, and and them really on the uprise with with every part of the even their kicker's good. I mean, they really got every part of it going. And I know people hate Jason Garrett. I think talent's too much. And it will overcome whatever you think his bad coaching is, which I don't think is even that big a deal. No, I agree 100%. Um, I think, you know, in football, there's only 16 games, so it's not like you're going to have a wide spread. But I think they're going to sweep their division uh, games, and I think they're going to be 12 and 4. I think, as you mentioned, I don't like Philly at all. I don't like Carson Wentz, not because I don't like the guy. The guy's no, he's a great and player, too, by the way. But Talent he's there, but injured every he's injured year. Gonna, and he's had some bad injuries, yeah. which is even going to make him slow coming back. Never mind, will he be injured again? They have nobody backing up. I couldn't believe they, they allowed Foles to get I away. To let him go. But, um, you know, this is the this is what's going to happen there. The, the Wentz is going to be hurt again, and they got nobody behind that. Uh, so I think this division is Dallas and the rest. Yeah. I think the rest are going to miss the playoffs altogether. Yep. Eight and eight. Great, yeah. You yeah. know, nine to seven, seven and nine, whatever. It's going to be all around Washington there. Washington might get Maybe to like Washington. six and nine. Yeah, a little bit better know. quarterback yeah. situation there. But or six and eight, uh, yeah. this whole division is just going to be Dallas and the rest. I No doubt about that. The playoffs, I think this year, they're getting through two rounds. We're going to see what, what happens. They're going to have tough games, no doubt about it. Win the going second round? Or win, the second second, round. win the second round. I think that they, they, this is a team on the rise. I love teams on the rise. They only get better. They are going to exude confidence, and I think we're going to see. And I'm going to go with you on defense. And defense, as I always say, win playoff games as a uh, Super Bowl will show you against one of the I highest a lot of hype on this defense. Uh, offense. So, um, you know, they've got all the pieces on the defensive side, which helps the offense not to have to be as great as maybe, you know, Tom Brady will be in, in his games. Uh, they're not going to have to do as much because that defense can play so well. And real so th- quick, by the way, Wayton's back this year. Yeah, I hope they go for a run simply. Honestly, he seems like one of the great guys in the game. Everyone has great compliments about him. So he came out of the booth. I hope they go on a run just for him. Uh, I think that would be a great story. Well, he's a big part uh, of that run. That's one thing they I mean, didn't have. He's a big tight end. Yeah, totally. He, he, they need him. Um, they lost Cole Beasley, which was actually Prescott's favorite target. Yeah. So. Uh, we'll see going forward, but yeah, I agree with you. Interesting um, point you say. I think they'll that. make the second round, but I don't know if they get past the second round. But I, I definitely agree. They're they're due for a good chance here. I actually missed on that, and I'm glad you brought that up. Sometimes for young quarterbacks, and we talk about Wilson being the same in Seattle, right? Having this favorite target is actually a problem because the teams can can center on that guy, and if you're not spreading the ball around. This starts to cause you problems. This is what happened to Seattle Definitely with could. Baldwin. Yeah, the same thing with Wilson. He spent his whole down trying to find Baldwin. So, you know what? This could actually help. And then bringing back Witten is huge. When you've got a team that doesn't, you know, explode for offense, to have a tight end that can get down there six, seven yards and, and then bowl his way to the first down, that's going to be big. So, those are two add ons. I'm glad you mentioned both of those. I'm sure uh, Jerry Jones is relieved because he was going broke there, you know, and now he's finally told that his team's worth $5 billion. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. We all feel sorry I mean, that's him. four. That's four billion higher than last year, so I'm sure he's relieved because I don't know what he would have done if he had to sell his team for a billion dollars. <laughs> uh, but anyways, here's the key to Dallas, and I think we can all agree on this. Everyone who watches football is stay out of the drama, guys. You'll be queen, uh, clean sweep, I think. And you know, I've thought about this. You know, I am keen on them probably losing the second round, but they have the potential to be the 2016 Carolina Panthers. Yeah, that's the team it kind of reminds me of. A team that like you talk they had about, one big year, kind of sneaky. But could easily get by with their division. And they could be a clean sweep. I think it won't be a clean sweep. I think they'll lose a game in Philly. I think that's going to be a tough game. I think they'll beat Washington Giants both times. But it'll be interesting. They could easily be that 2016 uh, Carolina Panthers that made it all the way to the Super Bowl. I could definitely see that happening. If they get a top seed, um, you never know at that point. Yeah. And that's why divisional play is so important. And they certainly have the biggest advantage when it comes to that. So uh, it should be interesting for Dallas. Dallas fans have been obviously waiting for a big playoff run at some point. And as much as people love to hate them, Let's be honest, they're a big staple of the NFL, and oh, yeah. it would be huge Always for the NFL story. if they made a run uh, to a conference final or even the Super Bowl. It'd be something special. Yeah, it would be for sure, and they've always been a top team. They were always my favorite team until we lived in Seattle for three years, so they're number two for me now. They'd meet in the playoffs somewhere, which they did this year. Yeah, hopefully and it's, they'll meet it's a again. tough game yeah. for me to watch. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's it. Dallas Cowboys win the division anywhere from win two rounds to the Super Bowl, we're, we're calling, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, Philly's going to be a big part of that. And we're going to do the Philadelphia camp uh, next. So we'll be back with the Phillies camp, and uh, we'll look forward to chatting soon.